Hello and welcome to Big Friendly Grub. I hope you are well. And the intention of this video today is hopefully it's going to be quite a quick one because it's not one I had planned, but it's kind of off the cuff because I was um, out getting some bits and pieces for other recipe videos yesterday and I was wandering around and had a look at the fish counter of my local supermarket and I saw they had my favourite fish of all time in there and that is the lovely monkfish. So I thought I'd pick some up because I wanted to make one of my favourite sandwiches because I love monkfish, it's a really meaty fish. I think you could say it's akin to catfish because catfish is quite a meaty fish as well and it's more common in the US of A than it is over here. But monkfish is probably the, the equivalent that we've got over here and I love it, but I don't buy it much because it's a little on the expensive side. It's a bit of a treat, but it's been a bit of a long week this week and I felt like I need to treat myself a bit. So I've picked up some monkfish because what I want to do is make a monkfish sandwich. I've actually already got a monkfish sandwich recipe on my blog. And it's actually probably the most visited recipe on my site at the moment, which is quite unusual, but you look around and there's not that many monkfish sandwich recipes out there. So it's managed to get quite popular at least popular for my little blog. There's a little did you know. But I don't want to waffle on for too much because I want to show you how to make this monkfish sandwich because it is one of my favourite sandwiches that I treat myself with. And I'm also going to show you how to make a lovely sauce to go with it. I was going to say tartar sauce but tartar sauce generally has capers in it and I couldn't get capers. I went to three different places and none of them had capers. Let's say it's just a tart aunt sauce rather than tart ah. But enough talking, I am extending this out more than I meant to. Let's get started making this monkfish sandwich because it's going to be my lunch and I am hungry and I'm going to stop pointing because it's very aggressive. Let's get started. All right, first thing to go into our tart aunt sauce is some lovely little baby gherkins or cornichons as they're usually called. So I've got about half a dozen here and I'm just going to chop them up very, very roughly into small pieces. These give a lovely tang and crunch to our sauce. Like I say, usually in tartar sauce, we also have capers as well along with these, but unfortunately there are no capers to be had this weekend for me. So I'm just going to have to stick with chopping up a few more cornichons than I usually would, but that's okay because I love them. So I've got our cornichons all roughly chopped up and I'm going to slide those into a bowl, hopefully without getting them everywhere. Well, I didn't get them everywhere, I just got them somewhere. And then next, I'm also gonna add in some dill, because I don't know if you heard, but I'm kind of a big dill. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm gonna add in a couple of sprigs of dill, because dill is a lovely herb, which goes very, very nicely with fish and especially in sauces. So I'm gonna chop up some dill very, 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 very finely. Pop that into the bowl as well. I'll quickly season this with some salt and pepper and some black pepper. Then for the actual sauce part, I'm gonna be adding in a couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise. Don't know why I said it like that. And then a couple of tablespoons of creme fraiche. Give it a nice, fresh flavor. Is fresher flavour? I don't know. It is now. And then last but by no means least, I'm going to add in a tablespoon of horseradish sauce to give it a little bit of heat, a little bit of creaminess and some really lovely flavour. Just going to use my tablespoon for mixing this up. And there we go, that's our sauce all ready. So we can put that to one side for when our sandwich is ready. There might be a bit more than you need there, but you can always cover it in cling film and use some another day. It should last a couple of days. Now that our sauce is done, we can now prepare our monkfish. This is our monkfish fillet, if you've never had it before. That's what it looks like. Like I said, it's a very meaty fish. Um, this has already been prepared into a fillet because I bought it from a fish counter. If you manage to buy a whole monkfish, then you'll find it's got a really big bone going down the middle of it, and you'll probably find that it's twice the size of this. So if you're a bit worried about trying to prepare monkfish yourself, it's fine. You'll probably find that most fishmongers or fish counters at supermarkets will already have it prepared. So what we're gonna wanna do is to cut this into bite-sized pieces. You can sometimes get these as medallions as well, and that's kind of half the work done for you. So I'm gonna cut these into medallion sizes. And then some of these bigger pieces, I'm then gonna cut in half again. 
So there we go, those are in nice bite-sized pieces. So we need to prepare the coating for these now. So I'm gonna move these to one side and I'm gonna get out another bowl. And into this bowl, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of flour, just plain flour. Then we're gonna season our flour with some salt, give it a good few grinds, and some cracked black pepper. Again, probably about a teaspoon's worth. Then I'm adding in two teaspoons of smoked paprika, give it a lovely smokiness. I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper for a little bit of kick. Half a teaspoon of ground cumin because these complement the flavours nicely. And then finally a teaspoon of garlic granules. So those go in there as well. Quickly mix this all together. Then I'm going to slide our monkfish fillets into the flour and I'm going to just get in there and coat these with flour. I'm not breadcrumbing these, I'm not doing like fish fingers or anything like that. We're just wanting to coat these so we get a nice crunch on the outside of the, the monkfish. We don't want to detract from the fish itself and have the uh, breadcrumbs or anything like that become the star of the show. So I'm just making sure these are all well coated in this. So those are all nicely coated and I'm going to move these to one side, have a quick clear up and then we can get on with frying this. Right, to fry our monkfish, I'm going to shadow fry it in some oil. I've got a nice deep pan here with probably about an inch of sunflower oil. It doesn't have to be sunflower oil, but some sort of flavorless oil will work. Um, don't use olive oil or anything like that. It's got too strong of a flavor. So probably about an inch of sunflower oil in the bottom of a deep pan. Um, get up to a decent heat. Um, make sure it's going to be hot enough to fry our fish. I've not got it at any particular temperature, but you can usually tell if it's hot enough if you get like a piece of, I've got some of the uh, flour mixed with a little bit of water here. If I pop this in, you can see that's already starting to fry up. Got that over a medium high heat. Going to start to take that out. See that's already starting to fry up, so that's all good. And I'm going to gently, gently pop our fish in a bit at a time because if I do it all at once, I risk splashing it everywhere. Also, you don't want to overload the pan, because otherwise you might make the fish all greasy if there's too much in there at one go. So I'll probably do this in two batches. So that's probably about half the fish. So I'm going to cook this probably about six minutes, I'd say, probably about three minutes each side until this is a lovely golden color. I'm going to lower that slightly. So don't want to overcook the outside and have raw fish in the middle. That won't be very nice. Mm. So that's had about three minutes. So I'm going to just turn the fish over and get the other side. I'm just going to give it a few more minutes now. So these have had about a good seven, eight minutes frying in that oil. And it's got a really nice golden crisp coating on it. And those smell fantastic. So I'm going to get these drained off onto some kitchen towel and then I can fry up the next batch of fish. In with our second batch of fish and then we won't be far off being able to put together our delicious fried monkfish sandwich. I can't wait. It's going to be such a treat for me. It's kind of inspired by a po' boy from America, specifically the New Orleans part. And I've never tried one myself, but this is going to tide me over until I can get over there and try one for real. So I'm going to fry this up and we'll be back once this is all done. Right, you can see that's got a lovely golden colour as well. So that is our fish all fried up. And I'm going to get this onto that towel so it can take a bit of time to drain and cool down a little. And then we can construct our sandwich. I can't wait for this. We can now construct our sandwich. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, but especially me, because I'm here now and I'm hungry. So I want to eat this bad boy. So I find best for this sort of sandwich, a nice soft submarine roll. Now, again, I went in three shops and none of them had any submarine rolls left in stock. So I had to make my own. Now, this is probably gonna make things better, but you don't have to do that. You can just go out and buy them. But if you ever want to know how to make these, let me know and I'll do a video maybe. But not today, because I've done enough baking and cooking today, so I am going to be making up our sandwich. So, let's bring this into two. Already sliced it because I'm prepared. And I'm going to put some of our lovely tart aunt sauce on the bottom here. But in terms of like green stuff and salads and stuff like that, you can put whatever you want in this. If you want to put tomato in it, put tomato in it. If you want to put something like radish in it, put radish in it. I'm just going to put a couple of nice leaves of lettuce in it. Now, why I'm only putting lettuce in it, you might be thinking. Well, just cause, get it? I'm on fire today. Yeah, I know, you're probably thinking, yeah, I wish you were on fire. Right? 
But anyway, <laughs> so go push down our lovely sweet cos. Now we're going to get our fish on here. So I'm going to pop on some of the nice chunkiest bits. I don't know if you can hear how crisp that is. If I bring it up to my microphone, you might be able to hear that. It's so crisp and lovely, and this is going to be fantastic. I'll cram as much of this in here as I can. If I've got some left over, well, that's just more to snack on. I think that's it. I don't think I can pack any more on there. Lastly, I'm just going to drizzle over a bit more of our sauce over the top of this. And then on with the crown. Oh, oh. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to pop this to one side and set up the camera for our final shot and then dig into this because I can't wait. Look at it. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that just a beautiful sight? That is smelling amazing. I'm going to get into shot because I just want to try this. I've been waiting, well, all day so far for this and now I get to try it. It is such a good sandwich and I'm saying that before I've even tried it because I remember the last time I made it now I'm gonna to have to think about how I'm gonna try this I might actually have to put this down for a moment and give it a go mm. Mm. oh it's all over my beard I'm sorry it's a mess but I don't care that is so good going in again I'm sorry, it's probably all in my beard. That was probably awful to watch, but it wasn't awful to taste. My God, that is so good. The wonderful, crisp, succulent fish in those Cajun-style spices, you know, the smoked paprika, the cumin, the cayenne. It's just wonderful. And then you've got the fresh sauce with the creme fraiche and the gherkins and everything else. It's so nice. And you've got that lovely soft roll to complement it. It is just the perfect combination for me. And it really wasn't hard to make, you know, it was probably less than an hour, front to back, and it was totally worth it. So there's nothing else left to do for me to go off and eat this. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, give it a like. If you enjoy what I'm doing, give the channel a subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you on the next Big Friendly Grub. Bye, guys. See ya. Thou shalt have the fishy and a little dishy. Thou shalt have a haddock when the wood comes in.